Yeah, so um, Pune is actually the birth city of Meher Baba. <laughs> so, so Pune is the birth city of Meher Baba, the avatar of the age. If you do not know about Meher Baba, you really might want to look into the life of this profound being. He's pretty much the most amazing being. He's uh, the spiritual hierarchy, the, the top of the, the hierarchy for this age. He's basically considered Lord Vishnu incarnate. Um, of course, a lot of people, they know they say that, like they like to make everyone an avatar, but Meher Baba is the real deal. And so I'm so blessed to be able to even walk these streets. And uh, I plan to go and see Meher Baba's home later today. So that's really exciting. And uh, yeah, um, you know, Meher Baba was this master that he, he observed silence for 43 years. I don't know if you could even imagine that. You know, I can't, I can't imagine what that's like. And his type of spirituality is really real and really authentic. And it's not for everyone, not even for me really, for all the time. Um, but I really love him and I've always had a deep connection to him. So I'm really excited to be able to be more a part of his actual world that he was in. And apparently his home and that whole district has like hardly changed at all from the way it was. And that's cool because Vishnu is the preserver, right? And so if he is Vishnu, then that would make sense. Hello. And so, oh, look at the cute dogs. <laughs> I'm not sure if you could see in the camera there, but um, you may have seen that that guy had a, a, red, a red beard. He dyed his beard red. Do any of you guys know why that is? Um, so the thing is, is that pious Muslims, very devout Muslims, will dye their beard red to show their devotion. Why is this a symbol of devotion? This is because Muhammad actually had a red beard and he was reddish in complexion. And he also said Jesus was reddish in complexion too. And Edgar Cayce said Jesus had a red beard. This is very funny because growing up I was always told like, oh, Jesus was probably black because, or you know, because he lived in the desert. But actually it's funny because historically that's not actually the case. Um, and what's interesting is red is this ancient divine color. It's a very, very divine color. But yeah, the prophet Muhammad would dye his beard red in his, as he got older to maintain his youthful appearance. And so that's why Muslims will dye their hair red. But what's also really fascinating is that this kind of goes back to the whole idea of the, uh, like the ancient Aryan, um, like people, the, the Aryans, the people who brought civilization to <clears throat> the Indus River Valley in India and Persia. This same culture is what brought astrology wherever they went. And you know, a lot of people say they like, might be ancient aliens and all that stuff, you know, if you ever watch that show. And it does, it is really mystery, mysterious how it all connects. But uh, yeah, um, it's actually a really strange thing that uh, even Prophet Muhammad had, was like fair skinned. And his wife had a name which translates to like blonde or like fair skinned as well. Um, that's really fascinating. You wouldn't expect, you wouldn't think that. But um, yeah, it's just, the more I learn about ancient history and, and all these ancient solar like sun worshiping cultures that use the zodiac, it's like they all must have come from some ancient, like more united globalized culture um and there's a lot of case for this idea of just an uh like an ancient religion of worshiping the sun that spread like all over from probably like all the way to ireland with the celtics and the druids all the way to bali in southeast asia or further um and it's very likely that hinduism was that religion you know it's very likely that hinduism spread all that far or some variation of it and then the legends that they tell about the Ramayana, like Ram actually did unite the whole like world, you know, for, and ruled like that for a long time. And, and Ram was the solar avatar. Rama was the avatar of Vishnu that was of the sun, you know? And so, I don't know, just been thinking about all this stuff more. It's, it, yeah, it's just, it's really fascinating. Um, I was so surprised with that red hair thing. I had read that, but I'd never actually seen it. There's a ton of Muslims that have bright red hair. You know, I just I thought it was so strange. Um, yeah, so, and then, you know, yeah, like we know that the, the uh, 
whatever, like the Ir the Irish, Celtic, red hair, the Germans, they're all, all the languages of Europe are Sanskrit or like based from Sanskrit or Indo-European. Um, and so, yeah, there must just be some ancient connection. And then what, why are all these white European people so obsessed with yoga like me? It might be because we also are a part of that culture too and have been and have lost it or forgotten it and been separated and are wanting to get back to it, you know? It's an undeniable fact that the most people that speak or read Sanskrit are Germans in Germany right now. And yeah, so it's just like not even in India is there enough, is, are there as many people that speak Sanskrit as in Germany, you know? And um, I don't know, that's just really interesting because we know that karmically, oh, look at these dogs sleeping, all these cute little dogs, can you see them? This one there's another one yeah but we know that uh, karmically it wouldn't make sense for all these Europeans to be obsessed with yoga and Sanskrit if it wasn't part of their past right the yoga sutras clearly says if you want to know what your past life karma is contemplate what you're doing now because it's what you were doing in your past life so that's a really fascinating idea to think about like if you're you know um, and what's also funny is like Hindus don't give a damn about this whole idea of cultural appropriation of like white people being into this stuff. They're with it, you know, <laughs> and it's only white people that are insecure about doing it or like, you know what I mean? It's kind of funny. Um, so, excuse me. Yeah. So th that's all been a really fascinating thing to learn about and to witness. Wow. Look at this. You see that bird? Look at all these crows. Yeah, Saturn is so strong right now. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, these are just some thoughts. So maybe, yeah, if you're a white European and you're obsessed with Indian yoga philosophy like me, don't feel that weird about it. Who knows? Maybe you're just reconnecting to something from an ancient time long ago, you know? And then you go into the mythology, like Eastern European mythology is like so similar. They have similar deities as Hinduism, you know? And like, uh, I mean, honestly, I could just go on and on about it. But um, anyways, yeah. Uh, this video is getting long enough and I'm so happy being here <sighs> it feels like I'm back home in this weird way and it's like it almost like makes me tear up like it makes me want to cry almost like thinking about it it's like something I've not been able to be near for so long you know and I'm back here it's just amazing so anyways I'll let you guys go on that take care Jay Baba <laughs>